Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a small antique store haul for you today. Got a great assortment of stuff as usual, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. Stay tuned. <laughs> So before I jump into this video, I thought you might like to know where the heck I've been. A lot has taken place in the last, I would say, month. Um, some good, and the last thing I'm going to mention, not so good. So as you all know, my 24th birthday marked the 5 year anniversary of me being with the TGX companies. I helped open up the home goods where I used to live, I was there for three and a half years. And I was there from day one, so I was pretty much the expert, along with a few other people who had been there since the opening of the business. And then I transferred to Marshalls when I moved two years ago. So technically speaking, uh, the two year anniversary for my Marshalls date is on the, I think the 30th or 31st of this month. So I had a luncheon, I got rewarded my boss got up and talked about me along with all my other co-workers that were there and we had a really fun time uh, that was probably around the last week that I had gone thrifting because it's been about four weeks so yeah um, so that went on a couple weeks went by my hours just picked up as they normally do uh, extra payroll means extra hours so I just took whatever I could get uh, I can't go any more than 40 which I mean to some people is nothing but it's a lot to me so yeah, I mean, everything was going well, and then my phone decides to go ahead and crash out on me. So I have a charge, usually, for whatever reason, I leave it on overnight and it charges full battery, and I don't know what happened. Um, took it to a phone repair place over, which is about a 10 minute drive. I originally took it to Sprint because we have a Sprint right up the street from us, but they didn't have any phone technicians, so I couldn't have it repaired there. So I found out that there's a, um, privately owned like a uh, phone repair place phone computer yada yada people were real nice there the guy had my phone fixed within a day because he had to order a separate part I think I paid a hundred dollars because I had two gift cards and I just used them on that that I had one from some drawings and stuff from work so I went ahead and did that and then out of the blue my dog gets sick and she'd been sick from rawhide before in the past like you know she'll have too much of it She'll get sick and then she'll recover. But this time something was a little bit off. She just wasn't acting like herself. She was... Like she couldn't move. She'd lost a lot of weight like to the point where like somebody who is anorexic. Like they're just completely skin and bones. They don't look healthy at all. So we thought the rawhide had seriously taken a pretty big toll on her. So we decided to go ahead and give it a few days and see if she improves, and to which she didn't. So Friday night, my mom and dad, my brother, took her over to urgent care, which is, again, right up the road from here. And, you know, a couple hours go by. I call and see how things are going, and my mom says that, you know, they didn't find any, like, masses or lumps on her, which was a good sign. So I let everything go. I'm just kind of trying to wind down eating a little something and just watching TV just to kind of pass the time and keep my mind off of the dog. So, you know, I get a call, say about like probably quarter of midnight or maybe it was midnight, I can't remember. That night was such a blur. So my brother calls me and he says, I think you need to come up here. So I'm like, okay. And that's kind of when I really started to get the feeling that something was pretty serious and come to find out from the vet that was uh, examining her they found out that she has kidney failure or she had kidney failure so I'm there for probably a good 45 minutes to an hour and you know I they just wanted us to spend time with her and just be with each other and just try to keep each other together which we were all pretty upset but yeah so what happens is, is they give us some time with her and then, you know, they, uh, the, one of the, uh, vets that came in 
just had some uh, my dad fill out some paperwork and whatnot and then um left us alone for a little bit and then she comes back in i guess they start getting ready to you know get everything ready to use the uh, give her the euthanization so you know i i just didn't want to watch that i didn't want to see her take her last breath that's just not something that i like to see when it comes to watching an animal die especially my sister my first sister so they didn't want to watch her you know or they didn't want her to die alone because you know we're a family that's what we do so you know i didn't want to see it happen i didn't want to see her take her last breath that's just not something i would ever want to do especially with somebody who i'd been with since i was 17. so you know i ask is it okay if i go home because i had to be at work at 5 30 again because all of my hours these last two weeks have been 5 30 or that whole week because i volunteered to come in early so i you know i kissed her hugged her told her i loved her told her to annoy the hell out of all the relatives that never got to meet her and keep an eye on abe while she's up there and you know like i said i hugged her kissed her left i was upset i had before they had gone through the process of putting her to sleep i asked if i could have her uh, collar along with her choker to which my dad said yeah you can take these and so i was upset i was kind of tearful in the car because i was like shit this is going to be the last time i see her and like i said the urgent care place is less than a five minute drive from my house so i get home i'm upset and then i kind of just came to the realization of you know she's not going to be here i mean i had my moment i mean i'm still i'm kind of mad and i'm still upset i'm just handling it a little differently than the rest of my family is i think part of that comes from the fact that you know i still have other things that i've you know that i have to do like i'm i i think three and a half hours later i had to be at work so that kind of helped take my mind off of it i wasn't like really upset or anything like i didn't have to excuse myself from the back room or anything like that but i mean she wasn't far from my mind i had her choker attached to my jeans um jean loop for the entire day and she wasn't far from my mind at all and I still haven't really told a lot of people that it happened. I mean, I posted it to Instagram, I posted it to Facebook, so a lot of my coworkers who are friends with me on Facebook saw it and you know, I mean, it's still it's still kind of a shocker because there are so many things that you're so used to with your pet. Sorry. Like, you know, she'd wake my parents up at five o'clock in the morning growling at their door, like I need to be fed, I need to be let out, and you know, the house is a lot more quiet when she's not here. I mean, we got the two cats, and they run around like trotting horses around this whole house, but, you know, we don't really have to let her out anymore, there's no more feeding her, there's no more, like, barks, and, you know, like, when someone rings the doorbell, she's not gonna come ring into the, or run into the door anymore. Just certain dynamics and uh, different, different, different things that, you know, we're gonna have to kind of get used to. I mean, we're all still a little bit in shock and a little upset that this has happened, I mean, it's not what we wanted we didn't want her to die but i mean what it was either have her for two more weeks and you know for our own sake or do what was best for her and put her down which we didn't want to see her suffer i mean she was she was really sick like she did not look like herself she didn't act like herself we all have our good memories of her and yeah, I'm, I'll leave it at that. So that's pretty much what's been going on. I know, don't really mean to, to drag you all down. So let's turn up the energy a little bit more. And on a more happy note, let's go ahead and jump right into this haul video. Okay, you guys, so in no particular order, let's go ahead and jump right into this haul video. First thing I'd like to share with you all is this really adorable cat. He's more blue, like a darker shade of blue uh, in person rather than on the camera. Uh, he's also got hints of gray and black in him. I just thought he was really cool. Judging by this little uh, metal piece right here, I know that he is probably part of the chain animals. Now normally I don't go for the just the 
one itself. I'd like to have the uh, kittens with it too, but I really liked the way he looked. I paid $3 for him, and I'm going to uh, keep him and put him with all my other odd little tchotchkes. Got this at an antique mall half price uh, from $4, so I paid 2 for him. It's a 1980s California raisin with the rubber face. I've never seen one before, so when I saw that he was only going to be 2 bucks, I jumped on him. So I'll be keeping him. I like some things from the 80s, not everything, but he's pretty cool, so I'll be holding on to him. For $5, I got this 1971 Mattel Witch Toy. I looked them up, and I didn't see any of them on eBay. It's made of wax, like a rubber and wax kind of a thing. Like I said, I looked them up, and I didn't see anything like it, so I went ahead and took the chance on it and paid the 5 bucks. If it's worth some money, I might list it. If not, I'm going to go ahead and keep it and put it with all of my vintage um, Halloween stuff. For 25 cents, I got this poodle on a fur puff. No markings to indicate where it was made, but it's definitely got 60s vibes with the orange bow. I think somebody had mentioned that this fur that they put on those figurines back then is actually real. So that's a little interesting. Again, pay 25 cents. I think because there are no cracks or chips and the paint's in really good condition, I might be able to get, eh, let's say maybe 18 to $20 on it. For $1, I got this really, really interesting Shrine Circus pin. It's got a plastic trophy dangling from a piece of ribbon. Really, really interesting. Never seen anything like it. Got it half price. And I will be putting that into my jar of old things because it's different and I've never seen anything like it. I think this ended up costing me a dollar. This is a... Uh, Santa mug. I've got a bunch of these. I, if I see them real cheap, I like to pick them up. I don't like to leave them behind. In very good condition. Um, not a lot of paint loss to it. So that was a really good pickup. These three mice cost me $3. I only bought the lot for this guy here. This is a Norcrest mouse sleeping in what looks like a holly leaf sled with Boots as the skis. It has the Norcrest foil stamp on it. Uh, crafted in Japan. Hand decorated. It's the December mouse, so perfect for Christmas time. And then what also came in this lot of was these uh, Russ mice. I think they're marked Made in Korea. They have a Korea stamp on the bottom, but as you can see, the sticker's kind of messed up on it. So I'm going to go ahead and sell this lot, I might ask 10, 12 bucks for the pair. Or if they go for more, I'll have to do some more research just to see. But I'm thinking 10 to 12 dollars just for this pair here. Probably from the 80s. The Norcrest mouse is probably from the 60s. So I got two DVDs. One came from eBay, one came from the thrift store. For five dollars, I got the Official studio biography of John Wayne, Duke, as a lot of people know him as. Very, very famous uh, Western actor, or he played in a lot of the Western movies. And I know he did an episode of I Love Lucy. Around the time that they traveled to Hollywood, lots of those famous stars popped up in that season. That was probably one of my favorite. Out of all of the seasons, that was probably my favorite one, was when they were in Hollywood. Just all the shenanigans that Lucy would get into with Bill Holden, John Wayne, and I forget who else they um, had in there. Van Johnson was in one. There were a bunch of famous people. I just can't remember all of them at one time. But that was really cool. And I know that Lucy was really good friends with him. So this is going to be a great episode to watch. I'm really excited to see it. Now, the Goodwill I was visiting had orange and green tags half off, so I found the second season of the Mary Tyler Moore Show, uh, starring Mary Tyler Moore, Betty White, Cloris Leachman, I think is in it, and Ed Asner. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is that Valerie Harper? I don't know for sure, but that might be her. Anyway, I uh, paid a dollar for this whole season. 
It's used. The first season I have, I bought it at a Salvation Army brand new for like $3.29. Still pretty good. Now this was really interesting. I got this at a different Goodwill in Pennsylvania. This is a 1960s ice bucket. What really intrigued me was that the, just the, the look of it was really cool. It's got a Florida Lee top and there are angels as the handles. Let me get a closer up so you guys can see them. I mean, just really interesting. Now this is real leather. The only thing that indicated to me that it was old was the fact that it has a Made in Japan um, sticker on the bottom. Just a very interesting piece, and I have three ice buckets now. I've got this one. I have the one that I traded with D from the Thrill of the Thrift. And I found one at a Goodwill a long time ago by West Bend for $7. It's got penguins all over it. Double insulated. Just a very cool piece. It doesn't look like you can hold much ice in there, though. But anyway, not something I would typically pick up because it's not really my style. But the ornateness of it and the uniqueness of it was definitely interesting. So let me go ahead and get these last few items out of their sleeves so you guys can see them. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen these three poodles that I picked up at a Goodwill. They were $3 a piece. They are known as spaghetti because there are little pieces of clay that were put together and just kind of gives it a bit of a texture. So we'll start off with this one. It's a white poodle. He's got gray fur and there's hints of gold all over him. No markings to indicate where he's from. Uh, again, $3 a piece. I think because these are very, very collectible. I think I might ask upwards of $35 to $40 each. Well, I might ask that for this one. This one is a little bit more ornate. It's got that tipped hat, which to me indicates that it is more French because of that. These are kind of prickly, but in very good condition, no major cracks or chips. There might be some places where the spaghetti's been chipped, but that's pretty normal. I'm, of course, I'm going to mention that in my description. Again, probably, maybe this one will probably be 50, just because it's more ornate. But then again, I'm just throwing random numbers out there. I'll decide what I'm going to list them for when I list them. Now, this one sounds like it's broken, but it's really not. It's just something rattling around in there. This one's a brown or tannish color. So I thought that was really interesting and a really good pickup. As soon as I saw them on the shelf, I knew I had to have those to resell. So $9 total, looking for a pretty good return on investment there. These next two items cost me 99 cents each. I found this really, really awesome cardinal perched on a ivy branch chalkware piece. Overall in very, very good condition. Only minor paint loss on the tip of the tail there. Terms of age, I'd probably date this to probably the 1970s. I think I'm going to ask maybe 10 to $12 on that. Now, I bought this specifically with somebody in mind. I'm thinking of Nesting Haven when I see this, or when I had seen this, excuse me. It's a fold-out mirror, and it's kind of got a crocheted look to it. I knew that this was probably something she would like. I don't want to blind you all. But for 99 cents, I didn't want to leave something like that behind. And you can stand it up and use it like for travel or... I know she's talking about going RVing with her husband and her, uh, her kids for a year. And if she needs a mirror, this is perfect. So I will be sending that out to her along with all the other friend mail I have to get out soon because it's starting to drive me crazy because it's piling up downstairs. So you all know I really love my pinup mutoscope cards and I was really lucky and after not having and buying some for a little while I got real lucky. So these four right here cost me $5.95 and why they charged $4.95 to ship it is beyond me because when I send out these mutoscope cards they go in an envelope and I stick a stamp on them and they're out the door and the buyer doesn't have to pay anything because the stamp is what seals the deal. And then 
you know, eBay is charging tax now, sales tax, which, I mean, I guess for them is good because that's more money. Well, for the states anyway. I was a little bummed about that, but I mean, I shouldn't complain about it because you know what? It is what it is, and there's nothing we can do to change it. So this one right here says, Sure, show me a diamond and I'll play ball. I really like this one because um, this kind of is a reference to one of my favorite Marilyn Monroe movies. It says, do you still prefer blondes? I've seen this one a bunch of times listed and I'm glad that it came with other lots because I wouldn't just be desperate to buy it on its own. It says, who said beautiful but numb? This one is entitled, for goodness sake. Now this one was separate. I bought it for $1.99. It says, a winning combination. I assume this is probably from World War II era because either this was probably from 1945 or maybe even 1944. Probably pushing more towards 1945 because this looks like the winning victory when we uh, won World War II. Now this one I bought in the past when I first started collecting the Mutoscope cards, but for whatever reason it was a very defective card and the image was very blurry. So I went ahead and rebought it. I think I got it for $1.92, which is pretty good, and I think they only charged me $0.99 cents to ship it. Very, very reasonable. So I'm really excited to own those. Got a few more items, so let me go ahead and gather those up real quick. Okay, so I've got one last item to share with you all from the antique store, and then I have another place where I got some good stuff. So this is a really, really cool 1970s vinyl butterfly box. I think this was probably meant for shoes back in the day. It's in pretty good shape. I might have to wipe it out a little bit, but it's a really good size. Uh, I got this for... It was $2.95 originally, and I think the booth was 20% off, so essentially $0.58 cents off of that. So that's still pretty good. So about $2.37 before tax. So I think I'm going to give that to probably, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So there's a place in my town called Wonderbook. It's like a used book exchange. They have, I think, they're not very large. There's one where I used to live, there's one in Frederick, Maryland, which is about a 27, 28 mile drive from where I live. And then I think there's, and then there's one here in town where I live. They can be pretty pricey. Some things, it's more like, really, you want to ask that for that? Or, you know, like any other place that you go. But at my particular store, they have a bunch of stuff out in front of the store, like VHS, they got books, they've got action figures, they've got... And the, everything that's on their sidewalk is one dollar, so that's what I paid for each of these items. So I found this Gabriel uh, game called Dizzy Spell High Q. Uh, it's the revealing hidden word game for two. I did look up everything, or look in there to see if everything was complete, and everything is there. I didn't do any research. Like I said, this is just me going on a whim and filming this for you all. So hopefully I will get some good money out of that, and for one dollar you can't beat that. Now I did get some paper goods. I'm going to pull this down so you can see better. So these were really cool. This is for uh, Scenic Virginia, uh, Zurama uh, for New Market, Virginia. I just thought the images and the art were really, really cool in here. This is just the, um, the Zurama place. This is just a little map. But this is where it gets really cool. Like all the different images, just very, very late 50s. Now, let's see if it shows where I'm thinking. Oh, here it is. So we've got Virginia City, which is kind of like the quote-unquote Old West for the day. It says, to be completed in 1960. So that indicates to me that this was probably maybe 1958, 1959. I thought that was really cool, and I just really, really like the artwork and graphics on this really cool pamphlet. Probably not worth a ton of money, but I just thought it was cool, and for one dollar, I couldn't go wrong. So this was really cool. 
Uh, this is a Carols for Christmas uh, pamphlet from the Prudential Insurance Company. I just really liked the deep blue color of the pamphlet. It's got all the different carols, and like I said, I really, really enjoy that blue color. And it folds out into four. And then here's what the back looks like. So I just thought that was really neat, and I contemplated on getting it, and then I said, you know what, for a buck, what the heck. Now this was my favorite piece that I found digging through all of that paper stuff. Normally I don't pick up souvenir items, but this was just too cool to leave behind. It's for New York City. I don't know the age of it because there is no way, there's no date on it. But I thought it was super, super cool, and we'll go ahead and go through a few of these uh, pages together. Let me see if I can find a couple of the pages. Give me one second. I wish there wasn't a glare. This is a really cool uh, picture of Times Square. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that Pepsi Cola logo up on the top of that building. That definitely dates it. I would say this is probably from maybe the late 50s or early 1960s. You can definitely tell the age because look at those showgirls right there. Isn't that awesome? But what's really, really interesting is that I know this is pre, I think it was either 1972 or 1973, because when you look right down the Hudson River, there are no Twin Towers, so you know that definitely dates it, because I know those were built in the early 70s, the original ones. We got Rockefeller Center, just an awesome piece to look at. We've got the skyline. I remember seeing, I think it was this image right here of that when I watched the movie How to Marry a Millionaire, starring Marilyn Monroe, Lauren McCall, and Betty Grable. Here's a really cool panoramic video, video, oh my gosh, panoramic photo of the Empire State Building. Whoops. We've got the United Nations Building. Gosh, I'm flipping through pages like it's going crazy. Central Park. There's the UN. We got really, the really old cathedral churches that are in the city. Sightseeing. Just a really, really cool book. I am definitely going to be holding on to this. I think this was really, really well worth the $1 that I paid. So yeah, that's everything I have for you. So let's go ahead and conclude this video. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. All the links to my social media accounts via Instagram are down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!